Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending the webinar today. Um, my name is Andrew. I am the sales manager here at uh, DaySmart Vet uh, Software. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, a little bit of a high level overview of the software today and specifically how it uh, can work for colleges and universities. Um, I have a, a special guest with me here today, um, Professor uh, Beth Palmer, um, who is, uh, well, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, um, Professor. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. I'm uh, Beth Palmer. I'm with Central Oregon Community College Veterinary Technician Program in Bend, Oregon. And I've been using the DaySmart software, um, used to be better, um, for around eight years now. And I love it. So I can show you what um, I do with it with my students. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, go through a couple of slides here to kind of give a high level overview of the, the software. And uh, as the professor mentioned, um, towards the end, we'll allow we'll, uh, her to share uh, the screen, kind of go through a little bit of the software and how it's used in, in uh, their environment. Um, also, quick highlight here um, with the attendees here, you are, all, all attendees will be on, on mute, but feel free to uh, drop in some questions in the, the chat here in the meeting, and we can uh, go over some questions at the end. And if we don't get through all the questions, um, you can reach out to us uh, afterwards. Um, you can reach out, if you just go to our website, daysmartvet.com, um, we have our contact information on our website and our email address too, which would come to our, our sales team when we can um, go over any questions uh, as well. So uh, agenda for today, uh, we're gonna go over some of uh, the features of software, how it can streamline daily operations and, and be utilized in a you know college uh, environment, a university environment. Kind of touch base on the communications aspect of the software, um, accepting payments in our software, so the billing aspect, and then get into the you know, demoing of the product a, a little bit here. So a little bit on, on the streamlining of daily operations. So a high level overview, our software is a cloud-based practice management software. So something that you can access from uh, any device, wherever you are. So any type of phone, tablet, or computer will work with our software uh, and any web browser supported as well. So from any device, you can access the software to, to handle your, your appointment scheduling, your medical records, um, invoicing, inventory management. So it's a all-encompassing uh, practice management software that handles every aspect of, of your, your environment. Touching base on the client communication. So our software does have built-in uh, communications within the software uh, versus using a third party. Uh, so our software does handle automated reminders that send out via text and email. Um, and not only just reminders for upcoming appointments, but also reminders for when vaccines are due or a certain service item is due for, for a patient. Uh, we even allow for sending out uh, documents like consent forms that clients can sign ahead of time. Uh, we've recently uh, released two-way texting and our pet care mobile app. Two-way texting allows uh, within the platform to have back and forth text conversations with your client. And the mobile app, the pet care mobile app is a client facing app that allows the pet parent to log in and access their pet's history, records, medical records, uh, uh, certificates, uh, and request appointments from there um, as well. So easily accepting payments. So as I mentioned, our software handles uh, not only the medical records, but also the billing aspect too. So we do have uh, integrated credit card processing uh, that allows you to, to bill right within the software. So when checking out a client, um, that's waking up the credit card terminal, prompting for the correct amount and allowing the client to make a payment with a credit card. Uh, but not only just the, the point of sale aspect, but also being able to store clients' cards on file for contactless payments, um, taking deposits up front, um, and, and, all, and being able to even send uh, invoices uh, via email or text with links uh, for clients to pay um, their invoice from there. So what we're going to be covering today is this, the aspect of our software not only being managed in a clinic aspect, but also in you know a, a college, university, and, and classroom aspect. So our software can handle 
um, you know, classroom environment, uh, given students hands-on experience with, with the software and, and managing a cloud-based practice management software, as well as handling the live environment of managing your, your medical records. Um, at this point, I'll pass it over to uh, Professor Beth Palmer here um, to show us a little bit uh, of the software. I'm going to go ahead and change you, Beth, to the presenter. So you should be able to share your screen now. All right. Um... just having me open my computer preferences real quick to share oh, okay. my screen. No worries. Are you all able to see my screen? Says it's not showing anything. Yeah, I'm I'm not seeing it. And then you were selecting that. Uh, that oh, here we go. N now I can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. So you should be looking at a um, medical report, uh, medical record practice for DaySmart uh, Word document. Yeah. Um, Okay, perfect. Um, so a way that I use DaySmart um, in um, my classes is I start students off in my um, office procedures class and um, we do scheduling an appointment um, and um, email a confirmation to the to a client and the client is their them. Um, I have them use their email address and I assign a, a, an actual client to each patient and these are clients that I have made up um, and um, the address and phone numbers are not valid. Um, I gave them a patient name and uh, an actual breed and I have a doctor and then I actually have a physical exam that the, the student is able to put in the veterinary software. So from this assignment, it goes all the way down. Um, I can show you on, on the day smart what I have them do. And I do additional tasks and um, like create a pop-up note, create a dental estimate, convert an estimate into an invoice, and then they can actually schedule a dental invoice and then they can create discharge instructions as well. Um, and then uh, I will show you. So hopefully you're seeing the actual day smart schedule. I am. Yeah, we're seeing okay, that now. Perfect. perfect. Um, this was a, an exercise that I had them do. So I went back on my scheduling um, for October 26th of 2022. The students were supposed to make an appointment and check the appointment in. Um, and if we go to Bandit, um, if it will let me here, um, and they even get really um, they will um, put fake pictures in as well. <laughs> um, so it's kind of nice. Uh, so here is Bandit. And um, if I open this patient exam report, um, this particular student um, put in all of Bandit's information. Um, he Bandit even had a microchip. The client's name is in there as well, Amy Bachman. Um, and then the student entered the exam per the instructions. Um, so this is how uh, I use them. And so it helps them practice exam entry. And um, what I love about this software is that students, it's cloud-based and students are able to use the software at home uh, for, and they can do assignments for me for homework. And then I can um, check them um, at, at any time. Um, and what, what I like about this software as well is that um, I, we use this for our um, medical patients as well. So um, I can go in and I know the, the mock client names and I'll delete the client and patient. So it's not 
um, interfering with our medical software that we have going on as well with our patients. So um, if I go back, let me just go back to the 26th one more time. If I go to Baxter, uh, this particular student worked on an exam and then they, they actually put in a estimate for this client and then they turned the estimate into an invoice. And for our situation, um, for the educational purposes, we don't take money. Um, so um, it, the invoice, we just, we don't use the invoices. Um, and so they're kind of um, not relevant to us, but it is nice for our students to be able to convert, to create estimates and then convert invoices and in, or estimates into invoices. Um, so that's that's what I use Vetter for, um, and it's it's worked out very well in our program. I'm sorry, day smart now. It used to be better. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Awesome. That is great. Um, I can. There's a couple things I wanted to highlight too. Um, on the, the main thing I wanted to show is a little bit of the soap too, if you don't mind. Um, Flipping back the presenter here. There you go. Perfect. So I appreciate that. Um, it's good to kind of see what, you know, how it can be utilized in the that environment. Um, there's a couple of things I want to highlight too, which two things really, really just one thing that kind of sets us apart from uh, from some of the other solutions out there too. Uh, first off, are you able to see my screen? Yes. The schedule. Okay, cool. Um, I wanted to hop into a, a, a medical note here. So whenever you book an appointment and, and check a, a client and patient in, uh, that's going to generate your your medical note for the visit and, and the invoice. Or as uh, Beth mentioned, you know, starting off with an estimate and converting it to an invoice. But really, the to kind of highlight the differences in our software and what makes us uh, really streamlined and efficient. I wanted to mention a couple of things here in the SOAP. Um, so this is an example of a, a SOAP template I have here. Again, in the SOAP at the top, we'll just see general patient info. We'll see any pop-up alerts on that patient's file, along with all of their reminders. Uh, reminders are color-coded in our software based on if they're, they're up to date, uh, due soon, or, or past due here. But if I scroll down here, this is we're just viewing the, the template of the SOAP that was selected at check-in. Um, these templates are fully customizable, so you can create as many templates you need in the software um, that fit your practice. There's over 600 different fields and variables you can choose from when building your templates. Um, and there's really no limitations either. You can create your own custom fields, your own custom drop-down and pick list items here. Uh, each field will have its own comment section, uh, which you can pre-populate with any default text or instructions as well. But really the, the two things that, that set us apart as far as the, the medical note goes is uh, one is that there's no save button here in our, our medical notes. Uh, and that's because as I uh, type in here uh, or dictate if you prefer, uh, these notes are being saved and, and updated in real time. Uh, so this is a live document uh, similar to uh, Google Docs. So with this being a live document, there's there's no scenario where you type in a bunch of notes, forget to hit a save button or uh, close out of the tab and, and, and lose all that information that you put in, all that work you've done. Everything is save, saving to the, the second that it's being added into the SOAP here. The other benefit with that is this document is a collaborative too. Uh, meaning um, multiple staff members can be working in the same medical chart at the exact same time updating their work. So for example, I could be here in the subjective section uh, taking my notes while a colleague is updating the notes in the objective section at the exact same time. Um, I'd actually be able to see my colleague's name next to the field that they're in, see their notes being taken in real time as well. So there's no uh, accidental typing over each other or duplicating those notes uh, either. Another big time saver uh, in the SOAP is a, a feature we have, uh, we call snippets. 
Um, snippets allow you to build a library of reusable content and shortcuts that you can drop into your SOAP at uh, any given time. Uh, you can create as many snippets you need in our settings. Uh, to add a snippet here into my notes, I just start with a hashtag, followed up with the phrase or title I gave that snippet. And it's gonna drop that content uh, automatically into my notes, saving me a lot of time. You can use snippets like these in any field in the SOAP, you can also drop snippets into a, a body of an email you're uh, typing up or any document uh, within our software as well. And then from the SOAP, uh, you can add the, the records and what's actually being done to this patient. Uh, this is a visit I did earlier today, so it's uh, I've already added these items here, but it's just showing us the list of items that we've done for this patient. Um, from here, I can add additional items or we can add bundles to the visit. Bundles allow you to uh, aggregate multiple treatments at once to be added to the visit so that uh, instead of adding one thing at a time, you can add a mass um, list of items that from typical procedures that you're doing. Um, and then anytime you add those items into your SOAP, uh, it's automatically adding those items to the invoice to be billed for if you're in an environment where you're, you're taking payment for invoices. Uh, but it's also adding these items to the uh, plan section in the exam notes. Um, it's updating my reminders associated with those items on that patient. And it's also updating my inventory in the background too. Um, and from here, once we've added some items, uh, I can make any additional changes I need to. If there's anything here that I, um, I didn't end up doing and I need to remove, um, I can delete a record from here, which then gets taken out of the invoice put back into inventory. If I need to add anything additional to this visit, uh, that's where I can go ahead and add a new record to this visit, which would be then added to the invoice as well. If we need to update something that was already added to um, uh, this visit here, then I can go ahead and just tap on the name of the item. That's gonna pull my screen here where I can adjust this specific vaccine here. Maybe I need to change the quantity or change the lot number I'm pulling this from. And then any changes I make here to this item and save, that's updating my invoice, my inventory, uh, and everything in the background. Um, last part of the SOAP I wanted to highlight too is this uh, documents tab here. Uh, documents uh, consist of letters and attachments. Uh, attachments would be anything external that we wanna upload to this visit today. So really any, any PDF, uh, image, or just any document in general. Um, I can drag and drop those files from here. Um, and when I do that and save, that's gonna store that document as a, we store that for you and then it's uh, stored as a hyperlink on the record in the patient file so you can view that attachment uh, from any device. And there's no storage limit for those either. You can even uh, annotate on images or charts that we upload for a visit as well. So for example, like maybe you took a picture of a lesion or something on, on the pet, um, I can then upload it like I did, and then we can annotate on that image from here. And that's just gonna pull up that image. And from here, I can mark on this image and, and draw and add uh, arrows and, and my notes, so on and so forth. And then you'd save that, and then that stores um, on the patient record. Um, additionally, with the, uh, the documents, here are our letters. Um, so letters can be used for numerous different things in the software, uh, typically used for things like consent forms or discharge instructions, uh, referral letters. They're completely customizable documents, basically like a, a Word document. You can create as many letters you need in the software. Uh, you can also have a letter auto-populate to the visit based on the appointment type, or based on a, a bundle or a record that was added. For example, this uh, wellness exam was triggering this uh, consent form here. The uh, form is gonna initially show in print preview. I'm gonna clear this signature actually. Um, and then when I edit this form, you'll see on the back end, it looks kind of like a, a Word document with variables uh, built in that you can add from our variable pick list items on the left-hand side here which will pre-populate with the, the information. Now for forms that need to be signed, um, we can have a signature field in the template 
that allows the uh, the client to sign this form electronically. There's two ways we can get that signed. Uh, one way would be um, in person. I could pull this document up here like so, hand a tablet over to the client so they can view this document. And then once we're ready, we can tap on sign letter and the client would be able to go ahead and put their signature in here and sign that. And that's gonna store the signature um, on the document. Additionally though, you can set these documents up as pre-visit forms. So that way this form gets emailed to the client before the visit, they can view it, fill it out, and sign it electronically from their own device. Uh, once signed, it's gonna store on file here like so in the software. So that step's already done before they arrive for the visit. And then for things like uh, discharge instructions or anything that you wanna send out post-visit, uh, you can set up as a post-visit form. So that's being triggered and sent out um, automatically after um, the visit has been uh, completed. So that's what really what I wanted to highlight here is some of the key differentiators for us in the software. Um, again, our software can handle um, every aspect from, um, you know, as Beth mentioned, the, the aspect of classroom experience and then also a, the live environment of handling your, your medical records, um, as well as all the other functionality of inventory management and, and billing and, and, and uh, checking clients out and taking those payments as well. Um, and the communications of reminders and back and forth texting and emailing, which all gets stored as a communication record on the profile. So I'll pause there. Um, Beth, anything else you wanted to add or anything um, you wanted to mention? Uh, I don't think so. I I have, um, I'm learning new things. Um, I've, <laughs> I love this software and um, just something to add is that I have found um, the support to be great. Um, if you have a problem with any type of um, thing, or even if you want them to add a feature, um, um, you all are on it. And I, I have really appreciated the customer service. Yeah, no, that is a, a good call out. Um, yeah, our support has, is a, we do have a great support team here um, internally. Um, and as Beth mentioned, um, you can reach out to them anytime, give them our support team a call, um, email, or even chat with them online through our help desk here in the software too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the support team is, is great. Uh, Compliment to the software in general. Um, yeah. So yeah, the help, uh, that, that's a huge part of our, our company in general. Yeah, great. Yeah, they're very responsive. They get right back to you. <laughs> yes, that's perfect. Um, Cool. I'm going to see if there's any questions here. Take a moment. And uh, if uh, I don't see any questions just yet, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a few moments here. If anyone wants to throw a question here in the in the chat, we can be more than happy to go over any questions there. Uh, one question is, how is constructive criticism delivered in the software? Um, if you're referring to like yeah a request like Beth mentioned something that uh, a feature request or something you want added uh, into the software yeah we do take that uh, constructive criticism seriously that's how we build our software um, that's how we develop and set up our roadmap of our development uh, and what we're going to add into the software to give us constructive feedback uh, it is just reaching out to our support team to for one, ask if, if it's something that we already have in the software, maybe it's just you're not finding it in, in the solution, but we it's there and so they can direct you on how to do that. But if it is something that we don't currently have in the software, yeah, well, that criticism uh, is is taken from our support team as a request and, and bubbled up to our development team uh, to look into you know how the, how we would be able to develop that in general. So reaching out to our support team or even in our help desk uh, we have a spot where you can submit a request from here too. So I'm just going to open up the help desk here, which our help it desk looks, has our knowledge. Oh, go ahead. Oh, it looks like she's asking about for students. Um, if a student writes something wrong, um, how can I write a note for them to rectify an error? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll let you take that then. Oh yeah. Um, so um, what what I do personally is that um, after my students get done with the activity. Um, I um, 
I lock their exam so they can't, um, like, especially if it's an exam, you can lock their exam. And um, you can't really, you could write something in the vetter software, like in the exam. Um, you could write your credit, your um, correction actually in the exam itself. Um, or what I usually do is um, I print out the exams and then I, write, I hand write um, any constructive criticism on their exam. Um, and then they can go back in and change it. I haven't found a better way to do that yet. Um, and, you know, we're trying to go paperless in this um, 21st century, so I'm always open to suggestions. But that's what I usually do is I'll print their exam out and um, write notes on it and hand it back to them. Yeah, thank you. I was uh, going off on a yeah. tangent there of something that wasn't answering the question, so I appreciate oh, yeah, the, no problem. clarifying that. <laughs> Perfect. All right, um, we'll see if any other questions come in. We'll give it a few more moments here. And so, Beth, so you're, yeah, you're using as uh, um, also like for assignments, like you mentioned too, right? So they're also like at home doing doing those assignments not only in the classroom, but also at, at home too, as essentially homework. Correct. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And then of course we, we have our student, I mean, this is what we use for our medical software as well. And then I have students, um, every student that enters e exam in DaySmart um, gets checked by an uh, instructor. So we make sure we have adequate medical records for our patients as well. Okay. That's great. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, if there is any questions, like I mentioned, you can go to um, our website. Um, on our site, you'll see all of our contact details. So, um, for example, if you just go to daysmartvet.com, uh, you can select to get in touch, or if you want to request a demo, um, that's that would uh, allow you to fill in your information. We reach out to schedule a demo. Um, and then also just at the bottom of our site here, you'll see our, our contact details to, um, to reach out. So our sales number and our, our sales email address, feel free to reach out to us and be happy to get in touch with you and, and uh, show you a little bit more about the software and have a more one-on-one -on -one, um, demonstration well to see if it's a, a good fit for your practice or, or college or, or environment in general, so. Um, really appreciate everyone's time today. Uh, appreciate uh, joining us, Professor, to, to do this. Um, yeah. This meeting was recorded, so all attendees, we will, and anyone that's uh, uh, registered but might not have been, atten you know, being able to attend, we will be sending this uh, recording out. Um, so that should be sent out here in the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, again, appreciate everyone um, attending the meeting. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. If you have any other additional questions, I'm happy to, you can email me at bpalmer at coccc.edu, and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest right. of your day. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye.